Well, 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 welcome to the Runners Connect Run to the Top Extra Kick Extra Kick Podcast. Hey everyone, I'm Coach Haley Munn, the Community Manager at Runners Connect, and I'm hosting your daily podcast this week. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and thanks for joining me for today's episode. If you have a question that you'd like one of our expert coaches to answer on the show, head over and submit it at runnersconnect.net forward slash daily. We love to help you to improve, so don't hesitate to ask us what you need to know. Today, we've got a question about trail running. This one is sent in by Lisa, who's looking to move up to the 50k distance next year. Lisa says, I'd like to run a 50k next year, and most ultras are on trail. However, most of my training up to this point has been on roads. I do have access to trails. Is once a week enough to train on a trail for a 50k? Hey Lisa, that's really exciting that you're thinking of giving an ultra a go. You're right that most, though not all ultras, include some parts on the trails, and it's definitely a good idea to get some training in on the surfaces that you're going to race on, especially if it's off-road. Let's first talk about the different demands of running on trails. Trails are different for obvious reasons. They are uneven, softer, and usually involve running up and down more hills than running on the roads. These differences require some prep to get the body used to them. The demands stress the muscles in the legs slightly differently because of the softer surface. Doing some running on trails will indeed help you to prepare. It'll help strengthen up all the little muscles in your lower legs and feet, which are crucial to navigating the tricky terrain. So if you do find out that your race is on the trail, it might be worth trying to get out there more than once a week. I'd definitely try to move your weekly long runs to the trails if you can. One or two other weekly long runs on the trail will also be a big help. The long run is probably the most important one to to get done off roads as it's the most specific preparation you'll do for the ultra. You also want to make sure you're including some hill sessions in your road runs and some hilly routes as one of the main obstacles that you might face on the trail is the hillier terrain. Courses with many different types of hills, short, long, steep, gradual, are really great for this. If you really aren't able to get out there on the trail more than once per week, don't worry as there are some other ways you can prepare for the demands of trail running without actually getting onto them. You should be employing a good strength and conditioning program. Make sure that you focus on the core and hips as well as the legs and ankles. You'll need to be strong in all these places to handle the demands of trail running. Sprained ankles can be a nightmare for trail runners, so balance training is an essential addition to your your schedule. Balancing on one leg initially before progressing to balancing with the eyes closed or on a wobble board is ideal. This should make you a better trail runner as well as reducing your risk of any injuries. Make sure that you're also doing some good training for the lower legs and Achilles, things like calf raises, uh, shin raises, and the, the more traditional core exercises like planks, exercises for your glutes like hip abductions, bridges, clams, these are all really important parts of your training plan. They'll improve your overall stability and ability to keep stable when you're running on uneven surfaces. So another factor to consider when transitioning to trail racing is the shoes that you're going to wear. If you already wear trail shoes, that's great. However, if you don't, it might be worth gradually transitioning to them as they can absolutely benefit you on race day. You should do this gradually as they're usually stiffer than normal trainers with less cushioning and therefore can cause injuries if you suddenly start wearing them for prolonged periods. So to sum up, I try to increase your time on the trails if you can. This is best done gradually so you don't just suddenly move from one run on the trails a week to five. Working up to two or three will be really beneficial for your race but begin gradually replacing road with trail mileage rather than going all in straight away. The different stresses of trail running can lead to injury if you don't allow your body time to adapt. So try to choose trails that are like those that you'll face on race day if you can. Trails can change greatly due to the weather as well, so if you think your race could be muddy, make sure you get some experiences on more slippery trails. That's a skill in itself, and studded trail shoes definitely come in handy. As your race is 50k, you'll want to make sure that you're prepared for the demands of the distance too. You'll likely want to increase your mileage whilst keeping your intensity lower than it would be for a marathon. You don't need to be smashing the speed work for this longer event. 
Building up to 22 to 24 miles in the long run, if you can, will help prepare you for the longer distance. You can also include some back-to-back long runs to help you get used to running on tired legs. That's where you run, say, 60% of your normal long run mileage the day before the scheduled long run. This is a great tool to improve your ability to last the longer distances without actually going the full 50k in training. So I really hope that's helped to give you some ideas for your preparation, Lisa. I'm excited for you and I hope it goes really well. For those of you listening that want to have your questions answered by one of our Runners Connect coaches, head over to runnersconnect.net forward slash daily and click the record button to send your question over. I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode. If you haven't already, consider heading over to iTunes or your favorite podcast directory and subscribing or leaving us a review. We appreciate your support so much. Hope you have a fantastic day, whatever you're up to, and don't forget to tune in for our next episode.